it's me dude I'm back and I've got more to show I'm gonna start I think by playing the game let's see what's cooking in the kitchen Ooh. well kind of looks like the map that I've drafted off a few episodes ago doesn't it although it's looking a bit off Ah, hmm, thinking, there's no collision or anything yet, I'm basically just walking across a crude render of the map surface, you can see there's no bordering or anything, I can pretty much go off into oblivion, but yeah, that's what I've been working on today, translating the map in, so I'm going to show you guys how I went from my prison yesterday, my prison scene, to today's crude map rendering. Woo! So I spent a lot of time in Photoshop today. Uh, I needed to strategize how I was going to go about translating maps into the game because I have to make sure it's a system that not only works for this map and by extension the the other map I drafted up but it needs to be flexible enough that for the foreseeable future I can load up all of the maps that I work on. So, so the first thing I needed to do was to represent our somewhat complex map here as simply as I possibly could which involved ding replacing all of the complicated 16 by 16 tiles into single pixels that represent the tiles themselves so the first thing I did was I I colored out all of the tiles you can see here yeah you can see what I did here with filling in all of the the colors and then I also scaled it down to be one by one. So the map represented at its bare minimum information. You can see right here it's 48 by 28 tiles. Boom, just like that. That's a map right there. Um, earlier it looked a bit like this. This is when I keyed it out with more similar colors. But to tie it in with the functional requirements I had, I've kind of grouped the colors a bit more and it's turned into this muddy. Yeah, it's kind of a mocha flavored uh, dark roast kind of chocolate thing going. And what I also did at the same time as keying out all the colors is I took out all the tiles. These are like the unique, all of the unique tiles that go into building this map with some exceptions. Well, one exception is these trees, which follow a pattern. I don't think I need four separate tiles to represent the tree. I think when we do load in the maps later on, I'll do some kind of post-processing to uh, run over the map and look for tiles that are like a part of a set and then replace them all out. Try and make it a bit easier on, on myself designing the map. Because the idea, the whole purpose of this is so that instead of opening up Photoshop and making a map out of all of the detailed tiles and moving them around and stuff like that, I need the maps to be easily editable. I need to be able to make maps fast because you know I want a lot of areas to explore but I also need the maps to be able to contain enough detail that I can express some creativity and uh, make some nice varied looking maps so from this to this is basically what the tile service becomes when we're going to read it in there is also another surface with it and it's this one and you can see that there's a lot less detail in this one. This is what I'm calling the object surface. It has some of our more complicated instances. These are stuff like the NPCs here, our old dudes, our pots and our treasure chest and stuff like that, objects that you'll interact with. Um, and the reason for that is because they're more customizable entities with all of the background stuff. It's just drawn once and then that's it. Whereas with the the NPCs and the stuff containing treasure, even though there are lots of pods, they have different rules and information associated with them, like the different NPCs will have different texts, some might open shop interfaces, stuff like that. Uh, items containing treasure, obviously they have varying treasure, stuff like that. They have on-off states, the treasure chest can be opened and the pot lids can be removed, stuff like that. So when they're placed into the game world, they need special rules also associated with them. Basically, we're handling that separately. That's why when I ran the game just before, you didn't actually see any of the... Whoop, I'm getting confused with my layers. You didn't see any of this extra stuff. That will be something we'll have to do next. Just talking about the surface layer for now, it's probably best to talk about this alongside the code. How do I go about explaining this? 
in terms of the tiles that come in I've allocated 16 slots and they're named like this G1 to 3, R1 to 3, Y1 to 3 and B1 to 3 and those are roughly the color schemes that I'm using and you can see them laid out here, right? Four versions of each of the colors of a varying gradient goes from light to dark. And I basically did it like this because when it comes to tiles and maps, I can't really name the slots after what I assume they're going to be, such as if it was only the town map, I'd do stuff like ground, one, two, three, four, tree, one, two, you know, and then whatever other stuff. But these rules are going to be the rules for all of the maps that load in so naming them like that would get very confusing so the way i've done it to help me internally is to visualize the colors so typically for ground stuff i'll use the greens and then i guess for trees or other organic things i'll use the reds these colors you don't have to worry about these colors or anything below here you can kind of see how i assign them with the equal signs like that and so when it actually goes comes to the code I've declared my my one map which is the town and I've got a set map script for it which gives it the properties very similar to all the other stuff I've been doing such as commands items equipment they all use a similar construct the two sprites that that our map needs first of all it needs the actual layout so this is it it's 48 by 28 tiles so the actual size in game will be 16 times both of those constraints and yeah that's how it looks and then the it needs the tiles associated to it which is just as we laid out it's 16 entries long and you can see that some of them have been left blank this is like yeah blank because we're not actually using them in this map and the ordering here corresponds to the map tile dot whatever down here and then to kind of clarify the map reading rules i use this guide here which is a essentially a one dimensional sprite right here with a width of 16 and that's got our colors from light to dark and the same order of these colors will correspond to the order of the sprites that i just shown so when the game starts the first thing it does actually is it draws that sprite to a surface because we the only way we can read colors in as variables and use those for whatever we need to draw it into the into the game first so we do that on the surface and then we loop through the width of that strip which is 16 and we're saving through surface get pixel uh, each of the color values there so that when we load in the complicated map sprite which is this we'll be going from the top left one by one we'll be comparing each pixel to the array of 16 entries to find what tile it is and then we match it up to the, the sprite index on the tiles Whew. all of that is a mouthful it's not actually that complicated so I'll show you the room so there's another room now called room game and this is the game we load into because it loads you into the first room and the game room is completely empty except for object main placed into the scene and there's no backgrounds backgrounds been turned off so it's completely empty so everything being drawn is first set up through that stuff we go to start game and we run enter new map and map.town that's our map in terms of the steps it has to take the first thing we do is prepare the map data we take in the map and so what we need to do is like with the map strip before we need to draw this to a surface so that the pixel data can be read so we create a surface of its width and height uh, we've got the surface of the map we're going to load in we actually create a buffer out of it and a buffer is a as far as I know a buffer is just a collection of data it's kind of like a more of a raw data form of what a surface is if you imagine a surface as a big collection of data with the width and the height associated to it after coming out of university I just do not remember any of the textbook definitions it's practically just a big ass collection of data here we go guys I solved it alright See, if you ever don't know what something is, you just Google it. See, simply put, it's a person or thing that reduces a shock or that forms a barrier between incompatible or antagonistic people and things. So used in a sentence here, family and friends can provide a buffer against stress. So putting it in those terms, 
uh, a buffer is like a way that we can reduce the stress that's going to be caused to our game if we had to go through each pixel and run surface.getPixel kind of like we did here surface get pixel I could actually do that here and I could forego this translation into a buffer but surface get pixel is very slow and it actually stalls big time uh, if you're trying to do that across the sprite so anyway we loop through both the width and the height of the map and then we use buffer.peak which is essentially the same as draw get pixel it's like reading data stored in whatever position it is in our buffer but with buffers you have to be very specific with the size and the data type it is which is something that I guess makes a buffer so fast in comparison to reading off a surface a surface and then like to get the R, G and B if I did get pixel it returns it in the format of like a color so you could just do a direct comparison but reading from the buffer we have to reconstruct the RGB based on bit shifting to the right position of the buffer and doing the stuff dude oh, no, it hurts my head but anyway basically what we're doing is we're doing exactly the same we did with the map strip we're just looping through all of these colors one by one and we're comparing all of them to each 16 entries in our map strip to see if there's a match and if it is then we're storing that tile enumerator value in our array here so that we know later when we go to draw the surface we can easily just draw uh, that tile index cool man and then with same surfaces you gotta delete them you gotta delete the buffer so we're not using it anymore cool anyway so after we've prepared the data then we can actually create the surface based on that so we loop through all of it again but this time we're simply drawing from the map tiles which are these Thing, and then but what index here is based on what we read from preparing our map data cool that was probably three times as long as an explanation as it needed to be this explanation was recorded a little bit ahead of time um, I actually had done just a little bit more and there was just a little bit more code there which fixed some other stuff we had but I'll start with that on the next video which will be more work on loading the map stuff in cool thanks guys